I'm going to go through the test now, and we won't go over it in class. We don't have to spend class time on it, but on the front of your test, you have a number out of 100. That's the percentage you got, and then there is a number circled over 350, and that's how much the test was worth. It wasn't worth 400. I made a mistake on the front of the test. It's actually worth 350 points, so whatever the percentage was, you got that out of 350 points, and then over on the the right side somewhere there is a score with a percentage there and that is what you have in class right now at the with all the homework involved hey on the first problem here we have one two three four five carbons and on that five carbon chain we have a four methyl and then two pentanol but if you just write that you've missed the stereochemistry there and the alcohol is coming out towards us, the hydrogen's going back. So if we do the priorities for that, we see that it is R for methyl to pentanol. On the second one, if we number around from the alcohol for five, six, we see that it's three, five dimethyl one cyclohexanol. And you can leave the one off if you want to and just write 35 dimethyl cyclohexanol because it's assumed to be the alcohol on carbon number one. On the resonance structures, we see that the first one, the only thing we can do is send electron density down from the nitrogen into the ring to form a negative charge and a positive up on the nitrogen. Now, I'm not sure if my arrow head shows up there or not there's a, a, a utility box on the side of the screen here but this is a negative and that's positive on the nitrogen then we continue along form a double bond break a double bond with the nitrogen still being positive negative on that bottom carbon of the ring and then continue on with a negative on the carbon next to the nitrogen, positive dissolve on the nitrogen, and then send it back out to the nitrogen. And we are done. And that's because we have that lone pair on the atom off of the ring. On the second one, we have a positive charge on the atom off of the ring, and all we can do is send the electrons from the ring out to the nitro, which gives us a positive charge in the ring and another negative out on the nitro group. And then we can chase the positive charge around the ring with only drawing one arrow at a time. Giving us each resonance structure with the same overall formal charge as what we started with until we get back to sending the, the negative charge back in from that oxygen out there giving us oops, giving us a double bonded oxygen there and a single bonded oxygen with a negative charge and then the nitrogen has a positive charge and then the double bonds in the ring. And that's our two resonance structures. On the second page, we have the mechanism. In the first one, we see that we have the strong acid HBr, so the first step is gonna be where the OH goes and grabs the hydrogen off of the acid to make a good leaving group. The good leaving group leaves, forming the cation it is a secondary cation, so that hydrogen on the adjacent carbon is going to migrate over. Pardon me. Oh, I can't erase it. to give us the 
tertiary cation and then the bromide ion adds to that to give us our product. In the second one, how can we do it so that we don't have a migration so we can't use a strong acid because the strong acid would form the leaving group and which would leave forming the secondary cation which would give us the product in A. So the only way we can do this one is with PBr3 and what happens with PBr3, you remember, is the alcohol goes and attacks the phosphorus. The phosphorus has a partial positive on it because all the bromines are more electronegative. So we end up getting the oxygen, the hydrogen, the phosphorus, two bromines, positive charge on the oxygen, our methyl still there, and then the bromide ion. And then we can do the SN2 where we come in from the backside, kick out the oxygen leaving group, and that gives us the bromine on the secondary carbon and the PBr2OH for our leaving group that left. And that's the only way we can do that without having a, a rearrangement, or one of the best ways to do that with arrangement. On the, the third page, now, when we have a 1 and a 2, do everything you can with the reagents behind the number 1, and then get to the acid. You don't mix the Grignard and the acid as you're going along. So in the mechanism, our phenyl magnesium bromide is just going to be a phenyl negative, which is going to add in to the carbonyl to give us the tetrahedral intermediate. It will reform a carbonyl, kick out a leaving group. to give us that with a negative charge on the far oxygen. Another equivalent of Grignard will add in to give us an O minus two pHs. The O the O with a negative charge and then we reform the carbonyl because again we have a good leaving group on it which gives us the ketone along with the dialkoxide another equivalent of Grignard adds into the carbonyl forming the alkoxide we get the pH O minus pH pH and then that can go grab a hydrogen out of the solution when we work it up and our alkoxide can go grab a hydrogen out of solution each step along the way to get us to the diprotonated one. And if you drew this both happening in one step, that was fine. And then that gets us to our product. Okay, when we look at this problem going from this this alkane to the ether, we see that from an alkane, the only thing we can do to an alkane <coughs> is brominate it. And to brominate it, we use bromine and light, and we'll put a, a bromine on the ring itself. Then to that, we could eliminate it with T butoxide form the alkene. The alkene we could treat with acidic water or the mercury acetate and water followed by sodium borohydride and that would give us the alcohol which we could oxidize with PCC or SWERN to the ketone and the ketone, we could add the Grignard, a methyl magnesium bromide, followed by acid, which would give us the tertiary alcohol. And then to that, we could add a strong base, NH2 minus, to remove the hydrogen, followed by step number two, a methyl bromide or methyl iodide to do an SN2 on it. Now there are a lot of different ways you can do this problem. This isn't the only one. 
If you want, we can do some in class showing some of the other ways. On the next page, we see a, a spectra question, and we notice right off that the formula was given. We see C6H5BRO, and when we look at that, it has a high IHD, so there have to be a, a lot of double bonds and rings in it. We see in the NMR that we have two different types of peaks. We have a broad peak that exchanges with D2O, between 5 and 6, which is going to be an alcohol, which we also see up in the IR evidence for that. And then we see peaks for the aromatic ring at 15 and 1600, so it has to be some sort of aromatic ring. When we draw the six carbons, we know we have to have an alcohol. It's going to have to be on the ring, and then we have to decide what's the substitution pattern is it with the bromine are they one two that I substituted one three that I substituted or one four that I substituted between the OH and the bromine so these are the only three choices you can have for What's the answer to the problem? I'll go ahead and draw the bromine up here. So then we look at the splitting in the integration between 7 and 8. Those are the hydrogens on the aromatic ring. In the 1,4 die substituted, we see a plane of symmetry here where these two hydrogens will be equivalent and these two will be equivalent. So we'd only have two signals and they'd both be doublet. So this would be two doublets would be all we would see and when we look at the NMR we don't see two doublets or only two doublets so it can't be that one so we can scratch the pair substituted off then we look at the ortho and we see this little hydrogen in between the bromine and the OH it would be a singlet because there aren't any hydrogens on the adjacent carbons and we look down here in the NMR again and we see there are no singlets so it can't be this one. So the only one it can be is the ortho substituted and we look and see this hydrogen is next to one hydrogen so it would be a doublet. This hydrogen is next to one it would be a doublet. This one is in between two it would be a triplet and this one is in between two it would be a triplet. So the answer has to be the one two die substituted aromatic ring. Then there was a page of blank for working problems in your, on the test if you needed any blank paste. Then we get to the synthesis problem and we see a Grignard added to a ketone. So compound A has to be just a tertiary alcohol where the Grignard adds to the carbonyl carbon. We eliminate that tertiary alcohol and we're going to get the double bond inside the ring where it's most stable, most substituted. Then we see the paracid here leading us to compound C. Paracid gives us the epoxide, so compound C has to look like that. And I guess I really should have shown it with some 
Stereochemistry. Can't erase it. I'll have to redraw it. So compound C really should have had this stereochemistry, though I was pretty lenient with how I did it. As long as you got an epoxide in there, I gave you credit for it. Then compound D, whatever epoxide you draw, is going to be the OH that way, and the methyl is going to add from the opposite side to give you the anti-1,2 or anti-2-methyl cyclohexanol. And then you eliminate it, and you're going to get the alkene, just like we did before in compound B. In compound E, if we add HBr to the cyclohexene, we get the, the bromine added on. There is no difference in the double bond, so we don't have to worry about which side gets the bromine, which side gets the hydrogen. Then we add magnesium to it, we'll form the Grignard. Cyclohexanone, if you weren't sure, was what you were given to start with. So the Grignard with cyclohexanone gives us compound F with an alcohol and then two cyclohexane rings coupled together with a carbon. And then we take that and treat it with sulfuric acid and heat and we're going to eliminate in between the two aromatic rings and end up with that as our product. Now on the next problem we're going to have to go back and forth on this so I can write down what they are but the first one was compound C and D to compare and C was the alcohol and D was the epoxide the alcohol would have a peak around 3500 and the peaks down around 1100 for the CO single bond and the OH bond and the epoxide would only have the CO stretches down around 1100 so that's how you tell those two apart now B and C B and C was the alkene and the epoxide and how would you tell them apart well the epoxide again is going to have the CO single bond around 1100 the alkene will have the peaks around uh, 1600 for the carbon-carbon double bond and that's how you tell those apart and then A and F A and F were the alcohol at the end and the alcohol at the beginning which I talked about the wrong alcohol up here but what whether it's a, C, or, or F here for these. And alcohol is still going to have this peak at 3,500. And between these two, the IR wouldn't be much help. The only way we could really do it is with the mass spec because of the difference in the weight. Then we have the extra credit questions. And we see in the first one, when we read all of this, and really this problem, while it looks vicious, isn't that bad because if you read through it says lithium boral hydride is a useful reducing agent more selective than LAH less than sodium boral hydride it reduces esters so we look in here where is there an ester the only place we have an ester is off of the cyclopentane ring so when we reduce it down we're going to get a carbon with an OH off of it so we reduce it down to that we still have the OH here we don't reduce the amide here and the amide still has the anisole ring system off of it and then we have the triple bond there still so this is compound 2 where all we did was reduce the ester compound 3 is where we have excess sodium hydride which is going to deprotonate both of the alcohols make the O minus then we add the then we add the uh, 
benzyl bromide, which is going to protect both of the alcohols. So compound three will start off with the same ring system as compound two. We'll still have our aromatic ring with the paramethoxy. We'll have the group off of there. We'll have our CH2O benzyl. We'll have the O benzyl there. We'll still have our carbonyl. And then in compound or in reaction three, we also have the reduction of the alkyne to the cis alkene. So we're going to get that. So compound three is just that, where we protect the alcohol and reduce the alkyne to the alkene. Well, blank page, sorry. And then the second extra credit question, which has the tetrabutyl ammonium fluoride which I drew on the board. And remember, the fluoride ion is the only thing that does anything in this. And all it does is it cleaves the silicon off. So all of the rest of the molecule doesn't matter. All that matters is we cleave off the protecting group and form the alcohol here and the alcohol here. And we get the methyl and then we have all... This other stuff, which I drew it wrong, sorry. All this other stuff, which doesn't matter really. And really, you could have just drawn a big circle. Because all of this just takes time to draw and doesn't have any part of the reaction itself. So that's all we did was we cleaved off both of the silicon groups and put it on there. So we got the, the diol and really if, if you had to have drawn it like this counted that because all that mattered was this part right here the rest of it didn't matter if you were had written in there about that so that's all you had to do is for that one and then the last extra question after blank page for writing on looked even worse but it had the same thing the tetrabutyl ammonium fluoride it had this silicon protecting group so all you had to do was draw the structure for compound three which has that k ring system that looks like this with the ch2oh after we treat it with tetrabutyl ammonium fluoride it has our oxygen with the benzyl protecting group it has the methyl it has the oh it has an h here and it has the allyl group there so that's what compound three is. Compound four is all of that where all we do is protect the alcohol with the tosyl chloride. So, and we all know, pardon me, let me erase my six membered ring, that was horrible. We all know that we just formed the tosylate. We still have our oxygen ether here. We have our hydrogen, the LL group. We have the OH here, the methyl still going back, our benzyl protecting group here. And then we treat this here is kind of messy. We treat this with methoxy or methoxide 
in compound four gets turned into compound five where we form a bond between the oxygen number one here and the carbon number two here and so all we do is the methoxide is going to remove a hydrogen off of the alcohol to form the O minus it's going to give us Now both of them are going up. We have this leaving group here, and the oxygen's gonna add to that carbon, kicking off our tosylate leaving group, leaving the H and the allyl and the O benzyl group. So it's just since we formed this bond between the carbon and the oxygen across the six-membered ring, it shows that they both have to be on the same side because that's the only way we can form that bond. So, And that's all you had to show for the mechanism. And I had put it again on this page so that you could see it without all the other stuff. But the on this test, you see a lot of the extra credit questions. While they look really hard, really there wasn't that much to them. And be careful that you can see the problem through what all it's asking and try to keep the your work down to just what it's asking for and ignore all the other stuff in the molecule that has nothing to do with it. If you have any questions, pardon me, after you look over your test, feel free to come by and ask about them. Have a good day.